So here is the Airblade Intrepid V2, three inch, all built up at last. And I have my GoPro Session 5 in the frame because this is a frame that was purpose built to be able to hold a GoPro. Look at this built-in shelf right there and it has a little strap holder right below it to be able to strap your GoPro in firmly. Outstanding. I, it never really had occurred to me to try to fly uh, a three inch with a GoPro on it uh, until I got the question from uh, somebody that wanted one to do it and I had to think of what was the best frame for the job. And this is the only one that I know of. There may be a few others that is purpose built to hold a GoPro, has the H frame configuration so that you're guaranteed to not have props in view and is built for a 20 by 20 stack, um, two of them front to back. Um, so this is also using a couple of other notable items in this build. One, the new Emacs RS2 Naked Bottom 1306B with the T-mount prop. Um, very interesting. Now the notable thing about this is that these 1306 motors come in at a staggeringly low ultra light under 10 gram weight. That's right. You've never heard of a 1306 motor this light before ever. Uh, at least I hadn't. And uh, so these have the power of the long-standing, traditional, very popular 1306 size, but with a weight that is just above what you might get from an 1107 or an 1108. Um, very interesting. Much more power uh, with a light weight. Uh, but one of the, the sacrifices that you have to make when you run a motor like this is you have to run the T-style props, but this looks awfully like a gym fan flash prop well that's because it is the gym fan 3028 wind dancer prop and this is that special prop if you can see very closely right there it has that little plastic nub thing in the middle and that allows you to run this prop on a t-style motor or a traditional motor with a five millimeter um traditional motor nut on the top both 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 both, both is good Ooh, dual purpose. And unlike some of the other um, props out there of this size, this has all the performance of the gym fan uh, flash prop. That, and it's also a very nice lightweight. Another thing you're going to notice about this build is it has the Eagle Micro Lumineer Edition. Wow, this is quite a camera. Now look at it from the side profile. You can see that the Airblade Intrepid 2 offers full camera protection. It is completely down recessed in that cage. Um, very, very nice. Let's go to the rest of the build very quickly. It is also running the Mamba 20 by 20 stack. This is the second or third time I've used this stack. I really like it a lot. The pads are very tiny, so you don't have as much space as say a Heli Nation Talon F4, but you get it with the harness already pinned up, ready to go with the stack, and it comes in at a great price. Now I've had really good luck with the ESC on this. Um, it's quite solid and it comes with a capacitor that I have attached to the XT30 right here with some, I finally found some great heat shrink for heat shrinking um, XT30 with a cap. It's a perfect size. I got that off of Amazon. Uh, I'll try to put the link below if I remember. Uh, another uh, second time I'm using this is the Oscars backpack. Oh, I love Oscar's backpack. It is a really cool um, 16 by 16 or 20 by 20 VTX that is MMCX. I'm using, using the real ACC uh, UX II. I like that one because it has more of a slope on here. So it's perfect to mount to a rear standoff like that so that you get good reception when you're flying at the proper angle like that. Uh, and uh, of course an XM plus receiver that I have kind of in heat shrink seated between the two boards. So this thing flies very, very good. It is a very light, I think I believe it's 142 grams um, before you put the GoPro on it. And then with the GoPro, it comes in at about, uh, it was like 210 grams or so, 218 grams, somewhere around there. And uh, wow, it flies great. Without the GoPro, you're, you're talking some serious power and performance. Now with the GoPro on, I was expecting a couple of different things to happen. I didn't know how these smaller motors would perform with the GoPro attached. Um, one, so that was a curious thing that I wanted to find out. Two, 
I wanted to know, is this capable of doing any interesting freestyle maneuvers? Uh, and the answer is yes, it is. It really is. I was quite impressed and surprised at the performance of this thing, even with the GoPro on top. Um, you know, as long as you stay on the throttle, you can perform a variety of power moves without much problem. It has the power for it. Uh, so it's really exciting to be able to have this level and quality of footage without having to mess with the weird latency FPV feeds of, say, a run cam split. And there it is with the GoPro mounted on top. Ooh, quite nice. And even with a large camera, like the Eagle Micro in there, it's quite easy to match a very similar camera angle on your FPV camera right there. So there it is, guys. I will note a couple things about the build. Um, these front to back 20 by 20 stacks are very, very close. And I found it difficult to be able to fit anything else in this front 20 by 20 stack. Because if you lay it the way I did with the power leads coming out the rear and the harness at the front, the harness was covering a little bit of this part. So it was very difficult to fit another stack in there. Um, so people that are running like a turtles, I'm very interested to see how you guys did it. Second, you have to either choose the front or the back to mount your stack. Uh, and that means that I did the back, so my rear motor wires are substantially shorter than the front have to be. And I did not cut the motor wires for the rear at all, but I had to actually extend the motor wires for the front because they had to go all the way down to here. Now to make the build nice and clean, I ran the motor wires on the underside of the ESC, which does look nice. One thing I did like is because the motor wires are running all the way down here, I actually secured them with the zip tie right here in the middle. Now, normally on my builds, I like to secure the wires with either some three, some 3M uh, 33 electrical tape. Now that's a special electric, electrical tape that I find works much better than a standard type. And I also like to use zip ties to anchor this. So I found it to be a little bit cleaner to be able to just zip tie it in the middle on the underside. So the motor wires at the front are very secure without having that zip tie visible. Now with the Oscars backpack, I also did an extra secure point right there to secure it to one of those 20 by 20 mounting holes. You can run, as I mentioned in the initial frame review, toilet tank style battery strap or traditional. I'm running through traditional right here. Uh, a 650 fits on there perfect. If you're gonna be running the GoPro, you may also wanna try an 850 depending on how you're going to fly now some notes about how it felt in the air um <laughs> i gotta say i'm not a huge freestyle guy but one thing i noticed was that while it took a little bit more throttle to get up in the air with all the extra weight of the gopro session five going in a straight line was incredibly smooth um especially for a three inch i i i'm really beginning to understand why all of those famous freestyle pilots like ladrib or steel or stingy all run such gigantically heavy quads compared to the type of quads that I normally run, which are race quads. And it's because that extra weight really allows you to fly very, very smooth. So with the GoPro on there, you know, going at, you know, this is like a, what, a 30 degree angle or so, um, you're going to be getting very smooth footage. Uh, but you still have enough power to do a couple of power menus, which I'm going to show in the footage. So I'm going to show some DVR of this Eagle Micro Luminaire Edition. I think I'm going to talk more about that in another video about the Eagle Micro. And I'm also going to show some GoPro session footage with this thing. Really like this build. Wow, what a fun time. It is tight and it took me a little bit of uh, figuring out how I was going to lay everything out. But that's how I do things on every time I'm building a frame for the first time. So really exciting. Go, uh, You can pretty much buy almost everything that I use on this build at airblade.com. I'll have links in the description below for all these parts. And uh, just check out the description below for a code that uh, you guys can use for 5% off of your order if you order over 100 bucks. So thanks, guys.